Hello everybody and welcome back to our YouTube channel Applied Forensic Science for Justice Students Group. Myself Aditya Saini, volunteer member of Applied Forensic Science for Justice Students Group and today I am here with a new topic that is Introduction to Forensic Psychology. So the content of our today's video is Forensic Psychology, History, Who Employs the Forensic Psychologist, Subfields of Forensic Psychology, Forensic Psychologist in the Court, Expert Witness, Court and Forensic Psychology, Insanity versus Competence, Insanity Defense, Legal Standards of Insanity, Questions to be Answered, and finally we will discuss a case study that is Loriana Bobbitt. Forensic Psychology Psychology is an academic and applied discipline involving the scientific study of mental processes and behavior. Psychology also refers to the application of such knowledge to various spheres of human activity, including the problem of individuals' daily life and the treatment of mental illness. And the application of psychology to both civil and criminal legal questions or legal proceedings is referred as the forensic psychology. History In 1590, Rudolf Gockel first uses the term psychology. In 1879, Sir William Wood, he is also known as the father of psychology, founded a laboratory for the study of psychology at the Leipzig University in Germany. In 1908, Hugo Masterberg publishes On the Witness Stand. In 1917, William Marston develops the first modern polygraph. In 1921, State vs. Driver, first time a psychologist testifies as an expert witness in an American court. In 1922, William Marston becomes the first faculty member in forensic psychology. In 1931, Howard Berg publishes Legal Psychology, the first forensic psychology textbook. In 1968, Martin Reiser became the first full-time police psychologist. In 2001, APA recognizes forensic psychology as a specialty. Who employs the forensic psychologist? First, central, state, local government and facilities like prison, jail, police department, correction facilities, probation and parole, military, etc. Second, treatment facilities like drug or chemical rehabilitation, short or long term residential facilities, counseling centers, mental hospitals, etc. Third, court attorney and legal advocacy groups. Four, self-employed private practice and consultant. Fifth, teaching in colleges or universities, etc. Subfields of Forensic Psychology First, Clinical Forensic Psychology It is very similar to Clinical Psychology. Clients here are not only suffering from some type of mental problems, but their issues are of more important to legal decision making as well. Second, Development Psychology It deals with the juveniles, the elderly and the law. It focuses on the policy making rather than the treatment of those with mental problems. Third, Social Psychology it is concerned with how jurors interact and arrive at a group decision. Fourth, Cognitive Psychology It is closely associated with the social psychology subfield, but looks more into how people make decisions in legal cases. Fifth, Criminal Investigative Psychology like police psychology, criminal profiling and psychological autopsies. Experts may choose to conduct research and or work closely in analyzing the mind of criminal suspects. Forensic Psychologist in the Court Psychologists and psychiatrists testify in an estimate of 8% of all civil trials. Mental health professionals participate in as many as 10 lakh cases per year. Expert Witness An expert must help the court to understand and evaluate evidences or determine a fact at an issue. Expert can be asked to testify by the court or by the counsel of either defendant or plaintiff. In witness preparation, an expert helps the witness to present his or her testimony better without changing the facts. The manner of presentation, associated emotions, preparation for being a witness in the courtroom, etc. are also handled by an expert. When the things came to convincing the jury, a forensic psychologist helps attorney in a way that they can present a case and evidence to jurors. They help establish presentation of opening and closing statement. Court and Forensic Psychology Basically, there are three types of courts. 
फर्स्ट फैमिली कोर्ट सेकेंड सिविल कोर्ट थर्ड क्रिमिनल कोर्ट इन अ फैमिली कोर्ट अ फोरेंसिक साइकोलॉजिस्ट डील्स विद द केसेस लाइक चाइल्ड कस्टडी इवेल्युएशन विजिटेशन रिस्क असेसमेंट चाइल्ड एब्यूज इवेल्युएशन एक्सेट्रा इन सिविल कोर्ट दे हैव द केसेस लाइक साइकोलॉजिकल ऑटोपसीज सिविल कंपिटेंसी इवेल्युएशन पर्सनल इंजरी इवेल्युएशन असेसमेंट ऑफ इमोशनल फैक्टर्स इन सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट एंड डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एक्सेट्रा इन क्रिमिनल कोर्ट a forensic psychologist deals with the cases like evaluation of juveniles accused of criminal acts juvenile pre sentencing probation and waiver evaluation adult pre sentencing evaluation etc insanity versus competence insanity relates to a defendant mental state at the time of offense occurred whereas competence refers exclusively to the defendant mental abilities at the time of proceedings Insanity is a mental illness of such a severe nature that a person cannot distinguish fantasy from reality cannot conduct his or her affair due to psychosis or is subjected to uncontrollable impulsive behavior Competence in the context of criminal justice proceeding refers to a defendant's capacity to meaningfully participate and make decision during the criminal justice process Insanity defense an insanity defense is based on the theory that most people can choose to follow the law but a few select person cannot be held accountable because mental disease or disability deprives them of the ability to make rational or voluntary choice legal standards of insanity first mac duncan's rule this rule states that in order to establish insanity it must be proven that at the time of crime the accused had a mental disease so that he or she did or could not know the nature or quality of their crime at the time of offense or if the accused did not know that what he or she did was wrong second the durham rule according to this rule the accused is not criminally responsible if his or her unlawful conduct is or was the product of mental disease or defect third the macnaughton test This test is also known as the right wrong test. As per this test, a person was not criminally responsible if at the time of crime he or she did not know the nature of the act or that it was wrong. Questions to be answered. The jury was required to answer two questions. First, did the defendant know what he was doing when he committed the crime? Second, did the defendant understand that his actions were wrong? case study lorena bobbit let's start with a brief introduction of this case lorena bobbit argued she was temporarily insane when she chopped her husband penis with a kitchen knife a virginia jury argued she was released after 3 months of psychiatric evaluation let's discuss the case in detail after being raped by her husband lorena went into the kitchen where she noticed a craving knife on the counter memories of past domestic abuse raced through her head lorena bobbit entered the bedroom where john was asleep then she proceeded to cut off more than the half of his penis she then left the apartment after driving a short while she rolled down the car window and threw the choked body part into a field then she realized the severity of the incident she stopped and called 911 Lorena was taken into the custody. She stated that John sexually, physically, emotionally abused her during the marriage. Lorena's defense attorney maintained that the John's constant abuse caused Lorena to eventually snap. She was suffering from clinical depression and a possible bout of post-traumatic stress disorder due to the abuse. A court-appointed forensic psychologist, Dr. Henry, stated that She had been clinically depressed, frightened and emotionally overwhelmed when she maimed her husband. But he reiterated the finding of a report in which he was joined by two other state appointed psychologists. Mr. Bobbitt's act was a goal directed angry attempt at retaliation. After 7 hours of deliberation, the jury found Lorena not guilty. due to the insanity causing an irresistible impulse to sexually wound her husband 
as a result she could not be held liable for the actions so that's all for this one please like comment and share the video consider subscribing to our channel if you like the content and hit the bell icon to get the notification of our upcoming videos thank you so much for watching hope to see you guys in the next one